Hi there, this is Grooving in G, and welcome back to another Audio Finder tutorial series. Today we're talking about processing, and before we get into some of the techniques and functions in Audio Finder, I briefly want to talk about the processing output folder. Now I'm not sure what you're going to have set up by default, so I'm just going to show you what I've done, and hopefully you can kind of follow on with something similar on your own computer. So. The processing output folder is simply where Audio Finder will place files that you've processed. So if you use any of the options in this menu, such as if I normalize this file, it puts this copy into the processing output folder. I've just stored this on my Mac uh, and created a folder called processing output folder. And then I've dragged it into my favorites in Audio Finder. So I've always got it here for easy access. What you then do to select this folder as your processing output folder is right click any file and click make processing output folder. One thing to note about how this functions is if you're working in a list and I normalize this file so I process it, it shows me the file that I process here. You can see it's got this little N it adds to show you that it's normalized the file. However, it doesn't actually add it to the list. So if I then click off this list and click back, it's now gone from the list. So it doesn't actually add them. Where you can find it is in your playback history. It'll always add them here. So you can always come to your playback history to find the files that you've processed if you want the easiest way to locate them. Or you can go into your processing output folder and look for them in here. What you can also do is you can bypass your processing output folder. What this means is that the files will be processed and will be put in the original folders where the files are from. Now this can be really useful and I'll show you an example. Sometimes I want to make a playlist for a bit of hardware like I've got this thing called the Polyane Tracker and sometimes I make a sample pack to, to drag in there from Audio Finder. But the Polyane Tracker wants all the files at 16 bit and 44.1 sample rate and all in mono as well. So what I'll do is I'll create a playlist in Audio Finder first, and then I'll drag them all to this folder on my finder. And when you drag from Audio Finder to your finder, it creates a copy of the file. So these files are a duplicate of these ones now. And so then what I'll do is I'll double click one of these. And the reason this opens in Audio Finder. I have showed it in another one of my tutorials is that I have Audio Finder selected as my default app to open WAV files and MP3s with. And you can change that here. You select Audio Finder and then change all and it will work for all your audio. And then I go show in Finder, I go show in browser, sorry. And now I'm looking at this folder in Audio Finder. So now that I'm working in this folder out here, what I will do is that I will select this folder in Finder and then say I wanted to normalize all these files. I would normalize. Oh, see, I didn't bypass the processing output, output folder, so you've got to remember to do that and it will come with a little tick here. I will then normalize and you can see now it's created all these normalized versions of those files. Now the reason I selected this finder before is by pressing command and backspace on a Mac, I can delete those files straight to trash. You can see it's got rid of them. If I go again and say now I want to convert the, so I've got to select this, convert the bit depth, bit depth and sample rate, and I want to go 44.1 and 16 bit, and I go okay. Now you can see one of the problems with the bit depth is that it will only process files that actually need it. So this file, this reverse symbol, hasn't been processed because it must have already been the correct sample rate and bit depth. If you're working with lots of files, some of them get processed and some of them don't. So with the bit depth, what you can do is just sort this folder by bit depth in Audio Finder, and then you can get rid of the ones you don't want. Now when I did that, I converted to 16-bit. So I know that all my converted files will be at 16-bit and the ones before won't. So I can select all of these and then I can command and backspace to delete them from Audio Finder straight into the trash. 
and now those files have, that I don't need have gone. You can also split these files as dual mono tracks, which will split the left and the right side as two tracks, or you can also collapse them and sum them to mono. Having that option in Audio Find is really useful because certain tracks, especially older tracks, might have one side that's completely different from the other and you might want a summed mix or one of the sides more than whatever your program's going to do by default or your bit of hardware is going to do by default. So that's another thing I use all the time in this processing menu. Another really fantastic feature of Audio Finder is its ability to convert samples to different formats. This is actually not in the processing menu, it, this is in the right click menu and you can convert to MP3, you can convert to EXX instruments which are logic sampler instruments. I haven't used that very much to be honest but I use all the time, I use convert to WAV, convert to AIFF and I also, you can uh, encode and decode FLAC so you know you don't have to go and find some annoying free program on the internet to keep all your files in the right formats. Another thing I want to show you which I only started using quite recently is this auto crop. What this will do is it will detect I think a very low has a very low threshold of where it detects audio and it will slice any silence before that. So if I auto crop you can see it's got rid of that the front of that file. Finally something that's a little bit niche but I think is a very welcome feature because there's not much else out there apart from quite expensive paid programs is if you're ever using, I have some of these old school sample packs that I've gone through and you'll see they come in this format where they have lots of different samples all on one bit of audio from an old sample CD. This is the format they used to come in and you can actually use Audio Finder to process these files. So what I'm going to do now, I can do this sample extractor HD. You have to set the different thresholds here, but I think I just use the default one. Or, or I use these all purpose for synths and loops, something like this. And what it's done is it's chopped up this file now, this long file, which is a lifesaver. It can get quite confusing to remember where your files have come from. But you can always use your playback history to retrace your steps. Okay, well, thanks for listening. I hope this was useful for some of you and you enjoyed my Audio Finder tutorial. Uh, thank you.